Hi, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and welcome to another episode of Ask Dave. For many new hams, the only time they come in contact with the volunteer examiner system is when they take their tests. What I'd like to talk about is being on the other side of the table. We'll start with some history of why we have volunteer examiners and what is involved in becoming one. A lot of people who get their general are going on ahead to get their amateur extra license for the additional privileges. It's not as widely known as it should be that you can become a volunteer examiner and help administer tests to new hams. Now, just a little bit of history. The FCC at one time was a much larger organization that had field offices throughout the United States. Primarily, they were monitoring broadcasters, not only for the technical quality of their broadcast, but there were some issues at the time with certain forms of content. So, to get an amateur radio license, you had to deal with the FCC field office. They had one exception. When I wanted to take my novice test, I had to find a general class ham who was willing to administer the test to me. I was tested both on sending and receiving Morse code at five words per minute, plus there was a written examination. All of the material was popped into an envelope and sent off to the FCC. I didn't know whether I had passed or not until I got my call sign and license in the mail. I had two years as a novice licensee and it was either up or out. A friend and I worked together to get our code speed up so that we could pass the general exam. To do so, we traveled together down to the Los Angeles office of the FCC and took our exams there with several other people who were hoping for a similar upgrade. We were first tested on the Morse code. We both passed. So then we got to take the written exam. Again, we did not know whether or not we had passed until our upgraded licenses arrived in the mail. When I upgraded to advanced, I had to travel down to the Long Beach field office and do the same thing. But when I went for my extra, the VE system was already in place, which made things much easier. Plus, I knew I had passed right away. Now, Congress wanted the FCC to be smaller. They thought the FCC was spending too much money on field offices. This put radio amateurs into something of a conundrum. In lots of other fields, it is possible for volunteers to assist the government in administering examinations. In fact, they do this quite a bit. So this was set up for the amateur radio service. It was a fairly complicated thing. The FCC opened a period of time when different organizations could petition the FCC to become certified volunteer examiner coordinators. Several groups volunteered. Then the FCC told all the coordinators that they had to get together to develop a common set of testing questions. And so the National Conference of Volunteer Examiner Coordinators was formed. I remember back then that there was a lot of heat and not very much light as these people attempted to coordinate. But finally they came to agreement on the process and question sets were formed for the technician, general, and amateur extra examinations. There is a website, www.ncvec.org, that lists all of the FCC certified VECs. Now, note the definition here of Volunteer Examiner Coordinator, or VEC, is an organization that the FCC has certified to find people, train people, and accredit people to become volunteer examiners. As you can see from the list, there are lots of them, some big, some small. For example, you can see the Anchorage ARC VEC is in a rather remote part of Alaska. The ARRL is the largest VEC by far, 
And then there's a bunch in there I've never even heard of. For example, the Central America CAVEC, which doesn't even list a website. Now, the second most popular volunteer examiner coordinator is the W5YIVEC. The W5YI group publishes a number of training manuals that are quite good. I prefer the ARRL approach to training material, which is to present it as explanatory text rather than simply trying to teach people how to learn the test. Unfortunately, there are many, many YouTube channels devoted to helping you learn to pass the test without really ever understanding what's going on. I'm one of those people who makes a distinction between passing a test and actually knowing the material. The way my videos are put together is hopefully designed to help people learn the material behind the test so that when they become hams, they know enough to get started. Now, the National Conference of Volunteer Examiner Coordinators puts together the amateur question pool and coordinates them among all the VECs. Considering how many VECs are participating, that's a huge job. There are three sets of questions, one each for the technician, general, and amateur extra. Each is updated every four years, and they do this on a rolling schedule. They updated the amateur extra pool fairly recently, and they will be updating the technician and general in years to come. The questions go through an exhaustive approval process. Even so, some of the questions end up being disputed. One of the things that I've noticed is that some questions use terminology that is not common. The question ends up making its way into the question pool, and then if enough people among the VEC coordinators can get together, they will issue a note not to use that question on exams. Note that the VEC also provides the correct answer to the questions so that any of the VECs can create tests in accordance with the process designed by the VEC. Now, the VECs are not required to issue training material, but a few of them do. The biggest VEC by far is the ARRL. I am a volunteer examiner for the ARRL. Now, the ARRL itself does not schedule examinations. Really what it does is accredit volunteer examiners. Volunteer examiners can get together and schedule a test session at any time. It takes three VEs to do this, although often there are more. And the sessions must be open to the general public and advertised in advance. Simply listing the test session on the club website is okay, but it's better to register it with the VEC, and some go so far as to issue press releases. A given VE team is not required to accept walk-ins, although some are happy to do so. So it's best to call the team leader to get yourself scheduled. There must be at least three volunteer examiners at each test session, although it's a really good idea to have more. One person in the little group of VEs is designated as the liaison with the National VEC. Very active groups of volunteer examiners can be what is called field stocked, meaning that they have copies of all the tests, the answer keys, and a whole bunch of other paperwork that goes with issuing examinations. The active field stocked groups will schedule several test sessions a year. Ad hoc groups of VEs may come together, designate a liaison who contacts the national VEC for some one-time use test materials. So in fact, it's really very easy for a group of VEs to set up and administer an exam session. They need to make it open to the public and advertise it somehow. Now, I'm a volunteer examiner for the ARRL and have been for over 20 years. 
To become a VE, you need to choose a VEC, contact them regarding their qualification requirements, and fill out the paperwork. Some VECs will accept accreditation from another VEC. Now, you can become a volunteer examiner either as a general or as an amateur extra licensee, but as a general VE, you are only allowed to administer tasks involving prospective technician licensees, whereas as an amateur extra volunteer, uh, you are authorized to administer tests for all grades of amateur radio license. Thus, most VEs hold an amateur extra license. I've often said in the past that I consider joining the ARRL to be a mandatory next step after you get your amateur radio license. There are a number of reasons for this, but the one I'm thinking about here is the national capability to administer examinations. Becoming a volunteer examiner does not obligate you to participate in administering examinations. However, if you contact a volunteer examiner group and they agree that you can join in their session, many would be delighted to have you. Conversely, they may choose to do their session without you. They are not obligated to accept you. But most VE teams are happy to have additional members. Although it takes three VEs at a minimum, for larger test sessions with 10 or more applicants, sometimes it's best to have maybe six VEs so that three can be set aside simply for the grading process. Now, often amateur radio clubs will have their own volunteer examiner teams, and they are affiliated with one of the national organizations, usually the ARRL. In fact, once you get your amateur extra license, I would suggest finding a local VE team and joining them. Some people are very active as volunteer examiners. In fact, some examiners have assisted in over 300 test sessions. I was very active when I lived in the Denver area and accumulated over 50 sessions, but when we moved to Western Colorado, I have only assisted in a few sessions although the teams know to call me if they need me. The nearest regular test session is about 50 miles away in Cedar Edge. Just gives you an idea of how sparsely populated the Western Slope is. Okay, so let's talk about what is required to become an ARRL Volunteer Examiner. We look on the website. The Volunteer Examiner Manual can be downloaded for free. You can print it if you wish. I suggest you do so. There is an open book review test that basically causes you to read the book to find the answers. I remember when I took mine there was one question per page and they were in order which caused me to go through the book page by page. Some people may object to having to pass yet another test before they become a VE but please remember it's just the league's way of making sure that you've read the manual. There are lots of processes, solutions to problems, ways to deal with issues, and lots of procedures. Remember, after all, the FCC is part of the government, so you would expect a fair amount of paperwork. Now, when you join a VE test team, you will quickly pick up the rhythm of what needs to be done. There is the NVEC Form 605, which each applicant fills out. Then, of course, there are the answer sheets, the tests, and the templates for determining which answers are correct. And then every amateur who passes an examination is given a Certificate of Successful Completion of Examination, and that's quite a mouthful. Then the VE team liaison collects all the paperwork together, packages everything up, and sends it to the Volunteer Examiner Coordinator Headquarters where everything is double-checked. The VEC contacts the FCC and tells them who passed the examination and gives them the appropriate information. It is the FCC itself which will issue a call sign. As soon as your call sign appears on the web, you are authorized to operate. 
Similarly, if you go to take a test to upgrade your license, you may use the privileges of the new license just as soon as you pass the appropriate examination. I want to talk parenthetically for just a moment about something. Uh, this became really popular and, and that is the vanity call sign program. It used to cost money, but it doesn't anymore. So a lot of people who are becoming new hams are selecting new call signs more to their liking. That's a story all unto itself in another video. So the bottom line here is that lots of people are getting their extras fairly early in their amateur career. I would suggest that those of you who fall into that category go ahead and become volunteer examiners. I recommend the ARRL as the VEC to associate yourself with because they are by far the largest and the best organized. They take amateur radio licensing seriously and they are careful to make the whole process totally legitimate. I hope this discussion encourages you to become a volunteer examiner. It's really an honor and a privilege to do so. I have to tell you that since most people pass their exams, you get a lot of positive feedback from these people. I've given many exams to children, and the look on their faces when they have that CSCE is just priceless. So. Go to that ARRL website and go through the process of becoming a VE. Find a team with whom you like to associate and enjoy making amateur examinations available to others who want to come into amateur radio. Thank you for clicking like on this video and for sharing it. Please subscribe and once you are subscribed, please click on the bell so you can get notification right away about the videos. And be sure to tune in to W5KUB.com at 8 o'clock p.m. United States Central Time every Tuesday evening for Tom Medlin's live broadcast. I'm a regular guest on that show and want you all to see the other great things that are happening out there in the ham radio world. Please check out the tip jar and Patreon. Use both feet when walking. And until next time, 73.